It's playoff football time for the Vikings. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on the Laga Vista Football Show. Brought to you by the Laga Vista Booster Club right here on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. I do apologize if I sound... I don't even know how I sound now. If it still sounds like I have a head cold, if I sound stopped up, I apologize. Uh, in, in the interview, you might have heard me have to clear my throat one time. I tried to hit my mic button. I'm not sure if I did or not. I do apologize. I've been under the weather. But it doesn't matter because it is Christmas time in Texas, and that means playoff football, of course. And I always feel that what part of what makes Texas high school football, uh, the playoffs, so fun is it is right in the holidays. You know, every coach will tell you, every program, ever since even all the way back when I was playing, uh, if you made the third round Thanksgiving, that was one of your goals. You know, it's to win district, make the play, or I, go in order, make the playoffs, win district, play on Thanksgiving, and then, of course, make the state championship game. And, and part of what makes that fun is you get Thanksgiving on the third week, and then the week after the state championship games, you've got Christmas. And so it's just this, you know, it actually starts this week, but even just that month of football, uh, especially this year, I think it's almost exactly a month of football because Thanksgiving is on Thursday this year on the 16th, and then the state championship uh, games begin on the 13th, that Wednesday, uh, and they finish on the 16th. So you get two weeks of playoff football, Thanksgiving, and then a month of just amazing football. I mean, that's when you that's when all the pretenders, if you're in the third round, you're not a pretender. I do not care what your record is. I do not care what your path is. If you're in the third round of the playoffs in Texas, you are not a pretender anymore. And so for th- round three, then you've got the, you know, that's the region uh, semifinals, then the region finals, then the state semifinals, then the state championship. It's all power, big boy football from that point on. And Laga Vista hopes this year they're able to get away from just not only making that region final, but pushing through and making that state semifinal. And we're here once again, like we were last year for the ride. And I think it's going to be a fun one. I do think it's going to start off a little tougher this year. I think Divine this year is better than Bandera was last year. Uh, I also think Bandera is better than they were last year, as, as fact as they won district. Now, Divine is not, I don't know if Divine is as good as they were last year. Uh, they've had some injuries, a couple guys move away, all that kind of stuff. And so I, I don't know if the War Horses are the War Horses of old, but they are a team that's going to play keep away. A lot like Navarro, they do it the same way, but not quite. And that's one of the things I love about watching different teams run the same thing, but how they do things different. Uh, and they do it a little bit different, but the idea is still the same is to play, keep away from your offense, to frustrate your defense, to wear down your defense. And I think it's going to be a good game, but I do think Laga Vista has the weapons uh, to be able to neutralize the war horses. As always, we're going to be talking to the head coach of the Vikings, Coach Creighton Phillips. But first, as we've been talking about all year long, if you do not know, the Viking Sports Network is now powered by Huddle TV. All you have to do is go to fan.huddle.com, search for Laga Vista, then, or first you need to create an account there, then search for Laga Vista, and there will be a fee per broadcast. It's 8 bucks for one game, 15 for a month, 75 for a yearly subscription. Now, I'll tell you this. If you're there for the playoffs, I'd go ahead and do the monthly subscription. If you want to also watch, you know, basketball, baseball, and softball, and they also do volleyball, but volleyball's over, um, you can do the yearly subscription at $75. And if you do it right now, you would get all of the sports in the spring, volleyball, and the regular season of football uh, for next year. So I think that's a really good, you know, uh, time to buy it. Uh, or you could do it in December and get it all. Uh, and so you can, again, check that out, fan.huddle.com. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, you can email them to Eric Holt, eholt at lagavistaisd.net. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, it is the head coach of the Vikings, Coach Creighton Phillips, to talk about that last win against Gerald in the regular season and moving on to play Divine in the first round of the playoffs right here on the Laga Vista Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. 
Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. See Abla Espanol. Terry Bennett back here on the Laga Vista football show. Now joined by the head coach of the Vikings, Coach Creighton Phillips. And coach, before we start talking playoffs, playoffs, let's talk last week. Uh, you secure the number uh, the number three position in district by beating Gerald 49 to 26. There's a lot of fireworks in that game. What were your thoughts on it? Uh, I think you're right there. You know, a lot of fireworks. It was it was an exciting game. Uh probably more exciting than we were really hoping for um gerald you know they found a way to get the ball in the end zone hit some hit some shot plays on us and uh kept themselves in it and kept the game exciting uh you know further into the game than we were hoping for we were hoping to kind of put this one away and and execute at a pretty high level i think you know the kids played hard i think they got after it i think you know like i said they were able just to they were able to hit some shots and uh our offense was clicking pretty good uh Wide Herring had uh, another career night, so uh, there were some positives to be taken away from it for sure. Well, and I also think this is a testament to your defense this year to where Gerald hits a couple big plays and they score 26 points, which in today's football is really not a ton of points, yet it feels like, man, they scored more than a lot of teams did this year because your defense has been so good. Right. They've they've really played well. We're kind of bend but don't break and, and try not to give up that big play. Um, and that's where, you know, they were able to make some great plays at a receiver that had, you know, a, a great night. I think he had uh, four, uh, maybe all four of their touchdowns yep. uh, on deep balls or, you know, a ball where he, you know, made a, made a defender miss. And, you know, you know, once you get 20, 30 yards down the field, there's, there's very few people left to make tackles. So if one misses, uh, sometimes that ends up being uh, in the score. So uh, they did a good job, uh, Coach Murr, of, of finding that and executing that uh, in a timely manner. So I was proud of the defense of stepping up and, and really eliminating most of their run game and, you know, giving us the ball back and giving us an opportunity to keep scoring offensively. Well, you, you talk about the defense and you said that you're our bend, but don't break. But I mean, to me, that's where football is now with, with the offensive explosion defenses. Now it's simply about winning third downs when you can and keeping teams out of the end zone. You might give up yards from 20 to 20, but you've got to shut them down on third down and you've got to keep them out of the end zone. And that's usually going to be a good night for a defense. Exactly right. You know, it's, it's get off the field, right? That's the whole deal. You know, if you got a third and one, uh, you know, your expectation level is don't give up something crazy. You know, if you've got a third and four, five, six, then let's get off the field. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, win on first down, win on second down, get yourself, don't let the offense get comfortable because they're, you know, they're on track or, you know, in a groove. And so make them get into things on third down that maybe you're, maybe it's not what their, their favorite thing is. If you, if you let them run the favorite plays on third down, you know, you're going to struggle. So, uh, defense these days with the amount of offense that's out there and all the different, uh, RPOs and everybody's got their niche stuff that they're good at. Uh, I, it's, I'm sure it's pretty nerve wracking to be a defensive coordinator these days. All right. Well, you get to the playoffs uh, Friday at Seguin's Matador Stadium. You're taking on the War Horses of Divine, a six and four team. Not the type of year that they were expecting. That they're, they're usually a perennial district champion over in their district this year. Their second had some injuries early. What are your thoughts on the War Horses? I think the War Horses, uh, A, kudos to the awesome mascot. Uh, <laughs> yes. B, I think they they play uh, extremely hard. Um, you know, you got teams that some, some teams are finesse teams and, and they're all about executing or, you know, 
misleading your eyes and trying to hit a big play here and there. These guys are a they are a grind offensively and defensively. You know, they're going to run uh, some version of their favorite play, a, you know, a little power toss play over and over and over again until you get tired of defending or you get lazy with your eyes and then they hit you on a big play, right? It's it's not a lot of uh, glitz and glamour offensively. It's really just a, a blue-collar style offense. Defensively, you know, very similar. Uh, they're going to be they're not they're not going to take a lot of chances with the secondary you know they like to have 11 eyes on the ball they're going to run a zone you know in their secondary so that everybody's watching the run and they can you know they can run, play run pass uh and their box players are really committed to the run and really trying to stuff it and and push everything wide and uh, slow down what you do so uh they're going to be a formidable team to play this first round and we look forward to the challenge well, you're talking about your defense at first. Let's now move over to your offense. You know, th- this was an offense that had lost so much from last year. Y'all were changing things up, some of the things that y'all do. Where do you see this development of this offense? Is it where you want it to be going into the playoffs? You know, I think we've uh, we've evolved here in the last uh, month or so as we're, you know, we talked a lot about identity and, and who are we, what are we good at, what are we comfortable with, Um We've, you know, we've changed things up a little bit. We've added a lot of formations and shifts and motions uh, to get us into our favorite place. You know, we've we've kind of figured out what we like doing and, and what our kids comfortable with and what we can execute. And so, uh, to keep the defense a little bit off balance, we've we've been moving around a lot more. Uh, you know, wide herring last week I think it was 25 carries for 309 yards, um, running. You know, a lot of a lot of tosses and and a lot of power football. Um, the option game was still good and, and gave us some explosive plays. Uh, we're continuing to work on the pass and how we can, how we can, you know, you know, we want to do a better job on third downs. That's really a, a point of emphasis for us. But I'm proud of where we're at. I think it's it's morphed into what's best for the the kids on the field, and I, I think we still have a few things up our sleeve. You know, last year you started, this was that first year up in this division, in this region, and you, you basically announced yourself as a region uh, favorite, a region power, I would say. This year, that path is kind of there the same way. Uh, you could almost play almost the same teams. Uh, when you look at it this year, is your path, do you feel as strong as last year, stronger, less stronger? What are your thoughts on that? Man, it's so similar, uh, really, other than this first-round game. Uh, you're looking at the high chance of, you know, if you continue to win, you, you've got Senton again in the second round. You could have Navarro again in the third round, Wimberley again in the fourth round. Uh, really the third place position in our district is kind of the roughest spot in the region uh, with the with the talent that you have to go through to get to the regional championship. Um, you know, we're going to take it one week at a time. You know, we have to focus on, you know, what's – what's right in front of our face before we move off too far, but definitely we've looked at the path and it's, it's very similar. You know, I think it's, it ain't easy. These guys are all good. I think you've got, uh, you know, of course, if you, you know, we beat Sinton last year, we beat Navarro last year in the playoffs. So they have plenty of reasons to, to be geared up and, and to be geeked up to play us on a Friday night. So uh, we just want to take care of this week so we can, so we have next week to worry about. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie, and booze. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. As always, we want to thank the head coach of the Vikings, Coach Creighton Fields, for joining us here as he does each and every week. Now, if you don't remember... Uh, if Laga Vista loses this week, uh, we will have a recap show, but we will do it at the end of the state championship season. Usually I do those the week uh, in between state championship and Christmas. Gives the coach a chance to decompress and look back at his season. Gives him some time to get some distance from it. Um, if they win, of course, we'll be back next week as normal. So let's just Let's just plan on doing that, okay? Let's just be back here next week. And until then, this has been the Lager Vista Football Show right here on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media.